So Minecraft 1.15 just came out a few days ago, and I'm going to review it, because Benji and the Dark Revival isn't out yet, and I need a frickin' excuse to make a video. So anyway, 1.15 was a smaller bug fix update, adding bees, honey blocks, and a frick ton of bug fixes. So was the five month development cycle really worth it? Honestly, I have mixed feelings about this update. On the one hand, it did add a couple of cool new features to the game and fixed quite a few of Minecraft's biggest problems. But on the other hand, the update is a lot smaller than the ones we're used to and several of the major features we were promised for 1.15 are missing. Now I know that this update had to be quite a bit smaller to meet the quota of two updates a year, but I don't think the features in question would have pushed the update back that far. So what features are missing? Back in Minecon 2018, the first biome vote took place, and as we all know, Taiga won that vote. But the two other options which were supposed to roll out with 1.15 and 1.16 were the savanna and the desert. Specifically, the savanna biome is slated for 1.15, and the full release is out now, with no sign of baobab trees, ostriches, or termites. If this trend of small updates continues, we may not see the mountains update till 1.20. Now, I know that this update is supposed to be a smaller bug fix update, but we were promised these features back at Minecon, and it wouldn't have been that hard to implement them. It would have also really helped this update feel so much bigger and more fleshed out. The second missing feature I want to talk about are the functionality for the fletching and smithing tables. Just before Mojang released 1.14, they said that the functionality for these blocks would be added in the next themed update, and bees are definitely a theme. As this update was mainly about working out all the problems with Minecraft, I feel that this update would have been the perfect opportunity to add this. Alright, now moving on to the actual features of this update. I think honeybees are some of the best mobs that we've seen in a while. While most of the other passive ambience mobs that have gotten added in the past few years have been completely useless and pointless, but the bees are quite the opposite. The bees reside in either nests or hives flying around and pollinating flowers, then flying back to the hive to increase the honey level. Once the hive is full, you can get bottles of honey from it. These are quite valuable as you can either eat them or craft them into honey blocks. Drinking the bottles will fill up six hunger points and give almost maximum saturation, making them one of the best foods in the game. Honey blocks are also a great addition to the game, the fact that you can stick to them while falling makes for some great parkour courses, and probably one of my favorite features about this block, the fact that items and entities stick to it, which allows for some amazing redstone creations. As this block is almost identical to the slime block in terms of gameplay mechanics, when creating flying machines, you and all your friends can stick to the flying machine and travel along with it. Now, I love this feature because it allows for much, much easier AFK travel without having to build a complicated cockpit, and it just makes the flying machine so much more efficient in general. The honey block can do most things that the slime block can, and even can do some of those things better, like more compact piston doors. It's overall a great feature and a great addition to the game. And oh yeah, I just remembered the honeycomb block was a thing. To be honest, I'm quite disappointed with it. It is literally useless. I really can't think of any blocks in Minecraft that are useless to this degree. Maybe it could be used to sort of tame bees, as in when you have aggravated them by getting too close to the nest or hitting them, you could right click on them with a honeycomb block to calm them down. I don't know, it's just an idea, but this block needs some sort of use. Now let's talk about all the bug fixes, and man there are a lot of them. Well, most of them are pretty boring, except for the rendering changes, which improves chunk loading and frames per second. And when you have a computer like mine, this is a very welcome change. It also greatly improved explosion renders, which if you also like to detonate 30 by 30 by 30 cubes of TNT on a regular basis, this is also a great change. I would also like to talk about some of the bedrock features that have been ported over to Java Edition. The Bedrock Edition has so many cool features that the Java Edition doesn't get to take advantage of, and I, I really like what they're beginning to do here. Although it, it is kind of disappointing that most of the features that were ported over are more technical. What I'd love to see sometime in the future is just an entire little update dedicated to porting the Bedrock features over to Java Edition. 
That way we could have the really cool cauldron mechanics and the way leaves turn white when they get snowed on. So iron golems now crack when they're damaged, which I find to be an odd choice. I mean, if iron golems show signs of damage when they get hit, then why stop there? Why not just make the animals bleed when you hit them, or zombies' guts spill from their chests when you slash them with your sword? It just seems a little inconsistent with Minecraft, and a little weird. So was 1.15 a failure? No, I don't think so. I think it was a, a very well-rounded update, and succeeded at what it was trying to do. Even if it was missing a few features that we were promised, the ones that we did get were really well polished and thought out. And the features that were missing, I don't think it's because Mo Yang is lazy like I said in my last video. I think it's more of the fans pressuring them to get the updates out, and them cutting corners and rushing the updates to finish them. I said this in my last update review, but Mo Yang, take as much time as you need. I'd rather have a good update a month from now than a rushed one now. I know I haven't really said this in a while, but please, if you could support my channel by subscribing, it would be so helpful. And you get to know when I release new videos. It's a win-win. Okay, so to end this video on a much less sub beggy note, who's excited for the Nether update? With everything I've seen so far, it ticks all the boxes on what makes a great Minecraft update. I would go as far to say that it has the potential to be the best Minecraft update ever.